Hey, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And we are got a nut and day. Yeah, I just saw you, the lights go off. <laughs> We've got another review for you today. Really exciting one, cause man, it's a brand that yeah. hasn't been hitting for us for at least three, four years. We're back and it's gonna be Mizuno and it's gonna be the Rebellion, or Wave, you gotta throw the Wave in there. <laughs> wave Rebellion Pro. Yep. Remember, stay tuned to the end to see what's in the Bombas bag. And make sure you subscribe and like this video. Yeah. All right. Boop. I'll, I'll bring this back later. <laughs> Boom. All right, Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. Thomas, when we first heard about this shoe, I didn't know what it looked like, anything about it, and I thought, dear God, I saw the name Wave. And the only, Wave has somehow become a more boring name than Gel to me at this point. I'm just like, I, I almost didn't care. The problem is that we have gotten a couple promises from Mizuno over the last couple of years. They're like, we got this new phone, we got this, and you're gonna get excited, and then we get it, and it's just like, mm -hmm. it's like eh. This does still maintain the new phone's name. We'll get to that when we get down to the shoe, but the exciting thing for you to know is, this is a good one. Mizuno, more like Mizuno. Mizuno, yes. yes. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Let's time travel into the future with this thing. This is a pretty sick shoe just looking at it. I mean, need we say more? When it is. does this not, did, when you got this, did this not upset your entire universe around Mizuna? It did, but I was a little worried with some of this aggressive styling that we hadn't seen before in any shoe. Is it a gimmick again, or is it something that really works? By the way, stick around, because we have some interesting theory slash info about this shoe that it's gonna blow your mind. Yeah, and this particular colorway is called the Kakazomi colorway. Easy it's, for him to say. Yeah, it's a, I don't even know. It's a Japanese, based on a Japanese calligraphy, apparently that you do on the first day of the year. So the idea behind it is that it's supposed to be, usually when you, it's like writing your New Year's resolutions, which is to get your PB. And Personal actually, best. and hidden somewhere on the shoe are the Japanese characters for PB. So yeah. a little subliminal uh, messaging there. I've been looking for them. Yeah. Let's start with the upper, Robbie. All right, so yeah, a pretty open engineered mesh upper. It's made out of 90% recycled materials. Mm, feel so good about cool. that. I will say this upper is really simple. It really mm. breathes well. It's got a nice padded heel counter, just enough to make it feel locked in. Like, you know how like when you put on a Nike, uh, uh, Vaporfly, yeah. you kind of get that crinkly wrinkle around yeah, the yeah. ankle. This doesn't, this has a nice fit. Somewhat traditional, just pretty minimal. And the tongue is super light. Some people might not like that. The laces are reminiscent of, if you've ever run in the Adidas shoes, really thin laces. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be my only one knock on the shoe. It I'm ran a little good. short. I did a 17 mile run in it and my big toe on my left side, hmm. Screaming. To this day, it still feels a little bruised. I'm with you, a big toe on my right foot, so I guess so we- So we're a pair. Yeah. I, I don't mind a racer fit, kind of tight and snug, but it did put a decent amount of pressure. It's oddly inflexible. It's not much- The size is off a little bit short, or is the volume of this toe box a little low? I'm kind of curious because I love the way it fit in a size 10 and a half other than my toe hitting the bumper. I'd be nervous to go a half size yeah, up. Yeah, because I didn't feel like it, I feel like it fit perfectly the whole way throughout. Otherwise. Yeah, like where this lines up to the midsole where it keeps your foot yeah. on the platform, I was like, sweet spot. Mm -hmm, totally. So I'm a little nervous about, like I said, jumping up a half size could shift around where your foot lands on this midsole. So let's move on to the midsole, but before we do that, we should tell you that this review is sponsored by Bombas. By the way, we're gonna get into some really good stuff with the midsole. Before we do, Bombas socks. If you buy a pair, they give a pair to someone in need. We've been running in them, Brandon roll of footage, whatever. And you can pick up a pair for you or your loved one at the link in the description. You don't even have to love someone. Yeah, and I, neither of us do, so yeah. yeah. It's Give it to somebody that you sad. want to like you and think that you're great. That's a good idea. You could use yeah. it as kind of leverage in that yeah. situation. You're like, hey, look, I'm a nice guy. I got you a pair of socks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the midsole. Man, Thomas, what do you think about this midsole? There's some crazy stuff going on in here. Yeah, this is truly a sandwich of delight. So on the top, you got the energy light. 
and on the bottom you got Energy Light Plus. It kind of almost feels like a super critical foam on the top layer, and on the bottom layer it feels more like a PVAX yeah, like foam. It is hard for me to find the exact what it's made out of, but it's, I agree with you. It pretty much seems like you got some PVAX style. I would say that Energy Light is somewhat of a TPU based um, hyper super critical foam, and again. Boom, this one just feels to me like a PVAX. Yeah, and of course you, we got the wave in there. You gotta have a plate. So there is a wave plate in there. Uh, it's made out of PVAX Rilson. It's a plant-based PVAX plate in there, nylon, carbon infused, all those things. It's like every catchphrase for a plate that you can put yeah. in there. Nylon, carbon infused. Bio-based. It's, it's a freaking plate. Yeah, it's uh, bio-based as well. So you got 90% uh, recycled material on the top. Mm -hmm. You got a bio-based plate. I mean, uh, plate. it's kind of cool that they went pretty hard on sustainability and still made a legit shoe. Yeah, it's um, definitely a performance shoe. It is a full-length plate. In the forefoot, it's a little bit different. It's got a, it's got like a sunroof. Yeah, basically. There's a cutout, uh, almost like a honeycomb shape cutout in the forefoot. It's to relieve pressure underneath the palm of your foot. So you still get the rigidity of a plate, but with a little bit of a cutout so that you're not constantly pounding during the marathon on that plate while you run. The other thing it does to build some structure, it's got a honeycomb pattern slightly through it to give you that extra rigidity so it doesn't have to have all the weight to give you that snappiness that you expect from the plate. I think we should talk about the stack and how this thing you know, works. So obviously like, this design is pretty wild that the heel cut out. The midsole stack is looks pretty high it looks higher than the World Athletics legal limits. Yeah, it's pretty thick. It's a thick boy here where they wouldn't measure. Mizuno, I'm gonna applaud them for their creativity on this one because they're the first company to do it. And it's pretty ingenious what they did because this is a legal race shoe. And the way that they are approved, because by the way, this midsole is higher than 40 millimeters. In fact, it's probably- Closer it, to 50. It's closer to 50, depending what size you have. It's definitely 50 in that range. But the way that they get around the World Athletics ruling is that World Athletics measures from 12% of the inside of the shoe forward, which is around, what, this part, Thomas? Right about Like there. right here. Yeah, which is 39 and a half millimeters. And that's the listed stock height on the shoe. But and then, then you just seem to know it just keeps <laughs> getting fatter. Keeps getting fatter in this no man's land of measurement where they don't, uh, yeah, they don't measure that. And then back to the forefoot where it's uh, four and a half millimeter drops to 35 millimeters in the forefoot where they measure there. I gotta say, kudos to Mizuno for figuring out a way to get past the world leg rule and giving you a 50 millimeter stack height shoe. Now that's not the only reason it's tapered like this. When we talked to Sanuki at uh, the running event, he was showing me, he took a, basically the world record uh, spike. Mm -hmm. And then he took, uh, I don't have it here, but the the big, remember that one that looked like raspberries? And yeah. And so he's yeah. like, let's take a spike and put it on foam. Yeah. So if you look at this shoe and the way that it goes, it's like a spike where it doesn't, wouldn't have a heel. And then it just had like the spike and the, where you're gonna land and grip off has has the momentum for the shoe. He showed it to me broken apart and it makes sense when you see it that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And it's actually quite brilliant. He's like, you can't go 20, you know, 42 kilometers, he said, for in a in a racing spike, but if you bring the track with you, you can. So this is what we made for the fastest sprint in the world. But at the same time we know that. So we cannot run the 26 5K mile. Area, yeah, so that might be this shoe. But if we can extend as distance like this, yeah, it's good opportunity to chance to make the best Mizuno racing shoes ever. So that is an inspiration of this very, very pro. So let's see like this. So this is basically a moving device to get you in the track spike onto the road. Yeah, and I, I gotta say, they nailed it on this one, knocked it out of the park. What's crazy about the shoe is that your foot like a lot, some Max Cushion shoes, it looks like the sidewalls are super high, but it's not really that high, and your foot sinks down a lot. Mm -hmm. Your foot does sit on top of this for the most part, but it's oddly not an unstable shoe. No, because you're landing where you should be stable, not on your heel, you're landing midfoot to forefoot, 
it really does keep you up on your toes. And when you're up on your toes, you don't have to worry about the stability as much because you're not coming down. Were you yeah. surprised by the grip? Because I think the grip is also another story here that is mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Like this thing has teeth. Yeah, grip was pretty solid on this. And I, I mean, I didn't, it wasn't like I was running in the rain or anything and I did half my work on the track, so. The marketing name for this is Smooth Speed Assist. Uh, the rocker, the rocker yeah. shape. And it is a pretty wild, like, accentuated rocker. I, I just loved it. I felt like I got bounce off the toes. Now you said that you didn't feel like you got as much snappiness from the plate as yeah. you would have liked. I love that the snap that you find in the, say the Metaspeed Edge or even the Socket Neo from Pro, the second version. When you go through and it comes right off the toe, snaps off the toe. I didn't quite feel that in this. I feel like that's because this has so much cushion. Yeah, and so, that's probably why. Which is probably why I like it so much. I'd probably wear it on race day if it wasn't for it. I know that it would smash my left toe. Yeah, I, same way. I mean, I think this shoe is definitely up there with some of the best racing shoes right now. It really has a slim racing profile. You can see how wide it is on the base under. That's Robbie's talking about the stability. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we didn't even talk about how light this shoe is. Oh, we is, didn't? No. And it's so throw the weight out there, Tom. I mean, I would consider this a max stack, and it's at 8.2 ounces or 233 grams for my size 10 and a half, yep. which to me is right, it's right in there. Yeah, uh, my size 7.5 or women's 9, uh, 6.8 ounces, 193 grams. And yeah, it's easily, it's in the same boat as the Norfolk Pro. Those, it's in the those, range. Yeah. I feel like the energy return and the bounce from this totally merits the extra weight. Yeah, and it's still lighter than the Alpha Fly 2 at least. I think it's about yeah. the same as the Alpha Fly 1, so. Yeah. All right, so this shoe comes out in January in the standard colorways, in March in this colorway. It's $250, same as every other race shoe these days. I'm gonna give this a light though. Yeah, let's do it. Dude, strong, strong green. green. Neon green. We got neon on that? Yeah. I guess that is neon yeah, green. Yeah, it's about, it. yeah, it, it, neon would be. That's like green. toxic sludge green from Captain Planet. Yeah, so there you have it. Great shoe, sizing issue aside, uh, just a fun shoe to run in. I love where Mizuno's going, and if this is any indication of where they're going in the next couple of years, yeah. let's go, let's go. Yeah, we're in, all in. All right. Bombas sponsored bag reveal. This is random. random What's in the bag, Robbie? Random office item. Oh, it's the tape measure. Okay, what did we do to find out how high the All stack right, was? So our calipers, Very scientific. our calipers are still coming to up. So luckily it sits pretty much on, as you can see on top. So we measured it as best we could. It was in the 50 millimeter range. And uh, we, we, did we were confident that it was above 45. Yeah, which uh, 100%. Other thing that we should mention is, Bombas uses hex tech. Oh. And the shoe has hexagon tech honeycomb, on the yeah. honeycomb on the um thing. Bees, honeycomb. P uh, PBs. PBs. Personal best. Yeah, it'll blow your mind. So maybe you put your foot in a Bomba sock in this shoe. And in, oh. in the B roll, you should have seen Robbie. Oh, you said B roll. Oh, oh hey. yeah, bees. What? It's a B what attack. What's happening? So on this episode of Sesame Street, you've learned the letter B. Come back more. Follow us on Strava. Listen to our podcast, The Drop, and Feel for the Soul. Sign up for our weekly email. All the links are in the description for all this stuff. Um, follow us on Instagram, everything else. Subscribe and like. Yep. All right. Wham! Hey, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie. With Believe in the Run. And we're back no, for not, Short Circuit. Uh, you can play into yeah. it. <laughs> You're ruining just, things. Just let it go. <laughs> All right. All right.